another celebrity couple bites the dust. How can you tell whether you're dating someone who's not that good for you? Ooh, plus live love advice. On today's episode of The, the Game, Game Over, Over Show. Welcome to the Game Over Show. I'm Charles Gerolando. And I am adjusting myself. That, is that your full name? Do you have an initial in there somewhere? <laughs> I'm Lisa Stedman. How are you? You know how like your shirt rods up and you're trying to be all smooth about it and then you're on camera. Welcome. Uh, better. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Game Over Show. Definitely. You know, we've got a really interesting show and a lot of people have just RSVP'd yeah. on social media. Yeah, we um, love our social stream and we like how that interactivity creates a hot, hot show. So we want to get to the content. So should we do what's hot? What's hot? <laughs> so what's hot? We've had a really good week, right? It's been... Very positive in the what's right? hot sphere. We've been so trying to be all like kumbaya. And we promised we'd bring train wrecks too. Is this too. kumbaya? I don't know. All right. I'll go with you. Kumbaya. <laughs> we could hold hands and sing it. <laughs> do I do that instead? Let's do that. I wanna, who wants the to hear Lisa sing? Show. Please write in. <laughs> you don't want me to. But all right. Celebrity couple biting the dust. Boom. And I've actually been predicting this since they got together oh, really? eight years ago. Yeah. Josh wow. Brolin and Diane Lane. For those of you who don't know who they are, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Google it. Josh Brolin in lots of movies. Most recent is that Mobster Squad movie with Sean Gangster Penn. Squad. Gangster Squad, thank you. Um, but he's been in a lot of movies. Really good actor. He and Diane Lane. She was in Under the Tuscan Sun. That's right. what she's most noted for. Um, they are calling it quits after eight years of marriage, but I, the reason I saw this coming is very shortly within months of time, they're not eight years ago, uh, Mr. Brolin was arrested for spousal battery. Ooh. And that to me was a sign that they should not continue forward. That was a game over for me. What do you mean? Like, don't hit the one you love? Really? <laughs> right. I thought that was how you do it. Well, so, so here's what bothers me about that and why it's, I think it's a good thing they're divorcing because this guy kind of has a pattern of violence and drinking. So those charges were dropped. Diane Lane dropped the charges. Mm, game over on that. Um, but in 2008, Josh was arrested in a bar fight in Louisiana. And then most recently, New Year's Day was a good day, 2013 for Mr. Berlin. Once again arrested uh, for public intoxication. Wow. So I'm calling game over on not just the marriage, but on uh, that drinking and hitting thing. You know, we've talked about this about celebrities. Will somebody in his entourage or his team get this guy some help and get him to AA, please? Yeah, like, and anger management. Yeah, well, maybe he's a great guy, but the alcohol just doesn't work out for him. I know. You know, get maybe him to you AA. Look at Jesus. That. Yeah, maybe you should look at that. Pull a, and not that he did this, but pull a Tim McGraw because he has never looked sexier. He's been sober for like five years now, and I didn't know if he had a drinking problem, but damn, Tim McGraw was always hot. Now he's like, wow. Now he's sober. Now you can oh. see the man instead of the bottle. You can see the ass. Oh, it's awesome. good stuff. Hey, <laughs> you're a lucky lady. I say game on to you, you two. Woo! But we have kind of a serious topic today. We do have a serious topic, and a lot of people joined right before via yeah. the social stream. So glad to have you here. If this yeah, is your welcome. first time here, uh, we broadcast live every day at mm -hmm. 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern, 10 p.m. in London, and 9 a.m. in Sydney, Monday through Thursday. Yep. Um, and, and, and we dish it up street smart. So we, we like to say if you need the milk and cookies version, go elsewhere. We're not your experts. Yeah, we want to show you how to say game on in the right situations and game over in the wrong ones. And today we're specifically talking about massive game over behavior and personalities. On today's He Said. She Said. <laughs> And it is a serious topic today. It is. Um, it's a I, serious topic. It's, it's, 
feel like Hamlet. <laughs> um, <laughs> to sociopath or not to sociopath. <laughs> well, and the social stream was really active right yeah. before the show about this topic, right? Yeah. Um, cause the question that we had asked when we put the, when we put the invite out, yep. um, to come see the show was you ever dated somebody who felt a little different, right? Where their behavior didn't match the, what they were saying or they were manipulative or controlling, but it felt they self-serving. Put, oh yeah. With, without a lot of empathy and you just couldn't identify and you were looking for them to connect and they wouldn't connect with you. Well, I gotta say, even in our pre-show meeting, I, you know, I knew somebody that I dated at 22 was bad news, but when every check mark was in the yes column for today's topic, I realized how lucky I was to actually escape the relationship. Right, right. Yeah. Well, and, and, and so we want to provide that same service to all of you. Definitely. So, so let's start with defining some of this, right? So when we talk yes. about narcissistic behavior, sociopathic Sociopath. behavior, um, a lot of people think sociopath and they think serial killer. Right. Murderer. Right, right, right. And if they're not, they're not really a sociopath. Right. Au contraire. Yeah, absolutely. So while some murderers may be sociopaths. Yeah, those not, aren't inextricably linked. Not all sociopaths are murderers. For and sure. you can date and get in a relationship with a sociopath without getting in a relationship with a mass murderer. <laughs> but that doesn't mean the relationship won't feel like murder. Continue. <laughs> well, right. I mean, you know, sociopaths are, are a unique breed of human being. Um, yeah, that, let's really define this. Well, it, it, at a high level, they're incapable of any type of empathy. Okay. And they don't have a, to look out for. And they don't build a proper connection with other human beings. In there. All right. So we can in get into a lot of the specifics. Yeah. And one of the comments uh, from Shannon, and hi Shannon, hi on the Shannon. social stream was that, you know, some of these sociopaths are borderline uh, personality disorder. It's not fair to group them all in together. Let's get something really, really clear. Yeah. Right? Like sociopaths are not, this is not a disorder. And this isn't my words. This is straight out of the DSM. You've done a ton of research on this. I mean, this guy is like hooked up in this information. So <laughs> you do, do tell. Well, it, according to uh, hundreds and thousands of, uh, of psychiatrists mm-hmm. and the DSM, and if you don't know what the DSM-5 is, please Google it. Look it up. Um, it's yep. the index of all disorders and, and mental. And they, and they publish it yearly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but sociopaths do not suffer from a disorder in that fashion. Okay. Um, they are, they are hardwired to make a different type of decision. Um, so it, it leads you to, so uh, not treatable. well, it, that's what is said. Now I'm, I don't have an MD, PhD. Right, right. And that, we're not right? professing any of that. No, but what I've read and what I'm reporting here yeah. to you and, yeah. and to you, uh, is is really around that that the, the research states that that it's unchangeable um, because it's how they're wired up. Yeah, and, and this is important. It's how they're wired. So it's not about you. It's not that if you're in a relationship with them, you're what's wrong because a lot of them will make you think that. Right. It's who they are, and you cannot take that apart and have that same human being be in a relationship without these tendencies. So don't think, and and we're going to go through this, but don't think that there's number one, something wrong with you or number two, that you can have the person you love without these other tendencies. Right. Well, this is how they come. I mean, you know, total package. This is it. So let's talk about some of their motivations. They being the sociopaths, right? Yeah. Um, they, They really have a morality that's based on their own individual wants, needs, and opportunity. And, and I think that's such an important distinction, opportunity. So it's not even morality. It's really about opportunity for It's them. what they want. It, it's hardwired into the motivation is all about opportunity. And, and the most common motivations are money, mm-hmm. sex, and control. Mm-hmm. So the examples for that would be uh, around money, the, the guy who, who sleeps with his partner just to get paid, just for the paycheck. So he's sponging off of her. He's, he's, or she. Or, or, yeah, or she mm-hmm. is sponging off of him. Um, and, and just getting money in that way because it's yeah. opportunistic. Yeah. Um, Oof. when it comes to sex, you know, the, 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 uh, the woman who sleeps with her, her boyfriend's husband or her boyfriend's, her boyfriend's, her boyfriend's husband. Wait, wait. That's the woman who sleeps with her boyfriend's brother. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm switching, I'm switching the sexes, right? It would have been that sounds very the guy who's sleeping with his, his wife's sister. Okay, got it. Right? Got it, got it, got it. Right. The <laughs> woman who's sleeping with her boyfriend's brother. We're going to get all these cousins, uncles, dogs, right? What's control? Why are they, how, how does control show up? Well, control is, is a real big motivator. Um, sociopaths like to maintain really, really good relationships with people so that they can be manipulated. 
So they are very friendly. They're extremely charismatic. Um, and here's the danger. I mean, if you want a brief aside, like sociopaths who end up in a relationship with you uh, can alter the course of your life. Sociopaths who end up politicians or running companies alter society and culture. Wow, that's freaky and creepy. Well, and it's very freaky and creepy. Oh, I, I just got chills because I did date someone like this at 22. He was a lot older and for him... It was so interesting because he was physically beautiful. Inside, he was just ugly. But he was physically beautiful, and he would manipulate everyone around him for money, for for control. And I don't even want to know about the sex part. I mean, I know about the sex part with him and I, but... Um, see, well, but you could see it. Oh, I but, totally saw it. But, and everybody else could see it. Yes. But they all participate. Oh, we all participated. Everybody is a, is a marionette in his oh, part of his game. Oh, we all were. We all were. Right. I was so controlled by him. Yeah, it, it, it's, I was lucky to get out. Well, it's it's very scary. So that's why I brought that up, where mm -hmm. you end up with somebody like this who who influences your life. It's different when you end up with someone who's who's influencing culture. Um, yeah, that's freaky deaky. Wow. So, and when it comes to money, sex, and, and control, like a lot of normal people who are not mm -hmm. sociopaths have those same aspirations, but the difference is that a sociopath will trade you in to achieve all those things, whereas a normal Word. person, you know, like... If I if a man wants to have sex with a woman, then he'll pursue her. Yeah. And and if it doesn't work out, then it doesn't work out. Yeah. A sociopath will take different course of action. Like. Like rape. Like Ooh. like coercion. Um, okay. Like like roofie. Like oh. like whatever. Okay. Whatever achieves the goal that he or she sets out for themselves. Okay. That's Got it. it. Got it. So let's talk about some of the identifying signs. Yeah, this is really important because if you are in a relationship or you're dating and you're meeting people, these signs are, are such important red flags to pay attention to for your, your personal safety, for your sense of happiness, for your healthy well-being. Like, so really, let, I, let's dive into this and pay attention. Take some notes if you want because this is good. <laughs> well, and we'll have this up on thegameovershow.com yeah. as well after, yeah. after the show. But um, each of these signs put together make up the tendencies for sociopathic behavior. Mm -hmm. But we're not diagnosing anybody here, no. just to be clear. No, no, so, no. Um, but all these signs by themselves are, are a situation you don't want to be in anyway. I mean, these are not good people Run! to be involved with. So yeah. the number one sign, unlawful behavior. Uh, sociopaths are arrogant creatures and they think that they can operate above the law. Or that they can make the law change in accordance with whatever they deem as worthy to to do or not do. Yeah, the arrogance factor is really, really standing out to me. Um, and, and, and you see this. I mean, we've seen movie characters like this. But think about everyday people that you've encountered like this. It's, it's actually quite alarming. Well, and the scariest part about unlawful behavior when it comes to sociopaths mm -hmm. is that um, they're very intelligent mm -hmm. and they know how to manipulate. So the scary part is that they may repeat the same crime over and over, but they rarely get caught. So you see the behavior, but there's no, there's never anybody who goes to jail. So, well, maybe they're just, you know, fighting against the man. Maybe they're whatever. Like you can make a lot of excuses for this huge red flag because you won't find a sociopath usually dealing drugs on the corner, right? To school kids and then the cops come and arrest her or, or arrest her. Um, you'll find them doing white collar crimes. You'll find them manipulating the law. So, number one. Uh, number two. Three. Number two. Deceit. Lying, lying, liar, liar, pants on fire. <laughs> Shame well, on you. And the lies are huge. <laughs> huge and small. Uh, I mean, yeah. it's, it's really... Um, and, and the lies, even when they get tripped up in them, oh, watch out. Well, yeah, and then they either get angry or the stories get even deeper. And then there's the a bigger get deeper, lie. And, but there's also a lot of turning the blame on the other person. So watch out for that. Right. Well, there's it ends up, some of that for sure, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. And I know you've been through that. Mm -hmm. um, but it ends up being a deeper story that justifies the small lie. So you end up with a huge lie where, yeah. you know, it's, it's um, why didn't you call me for, you know, for two weeks? You know, well, I was I was visiting my sick grandfather. I called. You weren't there. I'm actually a CIA agent, and I'm not supposed to tell you. That's the kind of shit you'll hear, right? Wait, are you saying that Brody on Homeland is a sociopath? <laughs> Damn. Sorry. Why do we have the hots for a redheaded terrorist? 
We need to do a whole show. When on you say that. we, you mean you, right? I mean collectively as a culture, right, ladies? I know I'm not alone here. It's a little bit cuckoo up here. And same. Number three. Number three. Impulsivity. Yes. They act. Sociopaths act they don't on have their a plan. instinct. No, it's, no plan. it's all about opportunity. Um, and they they start up relationships very quickly mm. with a ton of passion and a ton of interest. Mm-hmm. But they, they say they love you very fast. But and if your connect. instinct says that feels too fast, pay attention. Because they're saying the words, but they but never connect. Real. Yeah, it's not real connection. Yeah, they never connect. No. Um, Nicole Kidman, uh, I can't remember the movie she was in, but she had to she play... She was married to a sociopath named Tom Cruise? I didn't say that. Maybe. Um, Allegedly? No, she was she was doing a role uh, as a sociopath. Oh, she's playing and a role. She was playing a role as a sociopath, and... She worked with a psychiatrist oh, wow. who helped her understand what it would be to be in that role. There was a scene where she had to, I don't remember the movie, where she I'm walked up. I'm going to look that up and we'll post that on the Game Over fan page. Definitely. Too. Well, she, she ended up walking up to a crash scene, watching a, a child who had just been hit by a car, dismembered bad. Mother is crying hysterically. And the Nicole Kidman's character was looking at the woman and the boy. And back at the woman, no emotion. Wow. No emotion. Um, because she couldn't understand. If the boy was a puzzle that needed to be fixed. And the woman's reaction, because she can't connect to a human, yeah. didn't register. So the character then went home and looked in the mirror and mirrored the actions of the woman so that she could practice the, be- the emotional reaction to a death of a child. That deep of a reaction. Because they don't have the repertoire of emotion. Okay, let's remember this. They don't have the repertoire of those emotions, which means that regardless of what they're feigning, it's not deep, it's not true, it's not real, and remember that. Number four, aggressiveness. Oh, yeah. They're irritated and they're prone to repeated fighting. Yep. You know, uh, whether it's verbal sparring or whether it's physical. Well, and so part of this goes into if they feel like they're being threatened or not getting their way or someone's not in line with what they want, whether it's control, sex, money, or those other pieces, the aggression is going to show up and be very pronounced. So pay attention to that. That's a dangerous well, they, one. They have to have control. Yeah. They have to have control with uh, all things within their domain. And this is not, so a lot of guys, um, a lot. let me rephrase, a lot of male sociopaths will call this alpha male behavior. That's not alpha male behavior. Alpha males are the warriors of the tribe. They, you know, they they are. Alpha strong. males are something different. Yeah, yeah, this is not this is this is not the same thing. Yeah. Uh, number five, reckless disregard. Ooh, do tell. So this is like very risky, thrill seeking behavior, I without know. thought of consequence, because they can always work it out. They can always work it out. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that would include that would be sex without protection. Yes. So, think about that. Correct. Uh, irresponsibility would be number six. <laughs> um, not holding down a job. Can't hold a job. And it's not because they're lazy, because they're super friggin' smart, right? Like, but really I love qualified. the distinction that you talk about here. Which one? Well, the distinction that it's they think they're too good for a regular oh, job. Oh, right. They, they think that a regular... So my ex-boyfriend. Right. So... I, I, don't, I don't do that kind of thing, right? Like, yeah. I'm beyond all that. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Right. That's for suckers. Right. And really? maybe it is, but it makes it really good to be able to fill the fridge. So, you know, and think about that. And on other people for that. Yeah. Um, and, and the last would be a complete lack of empathy and Ugh. remorseful conduct. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody screws up, right? We Absolutely. all make mistakes. But when you screw up, you have to make amends and you have to apologize. And we feel remorse. Maybe we feel guilt, um, shame. They feel none of that. Well, not only do they feel zero of it, but they rationalize what they just screwed up and yeah. hurt you. It's like, you deserve you it. You made me do this. That's right. And yeah. they honestly believe that, by the way. They do. They do. That's what's crazy. So, so how do you solve this? You run. You get you run. the fuck out. <laughs> the way you can identify it up front is to really keep your eyes open, right? Yes. And, and... Keep So if you're dating, let's say you're single and you're dating, be really mindful of people's behavior as you're dating them because they're revealing themselves to your point slowly over time. That's our drinking code um, for this show. But when you're dating people, they do really show up. So pay attention. And if you're seeing multiple signs especially, Run. Do not give them a chance to fix it or change it or talk you into some song and dance about how, you know, they're fabulous. 
run. Well, and there's a and there's a really big danger. I mean, a lot of people, men and women, mm-hmm. ignore the red flags that are coming. Yeah. Because these types of people and personalities have this unique knack of identifying a core need that you're missing. So they hone right in on it totally. and they solve it for you. They instantly totally. fill what you're looking for, but all the other stuff is a facade and it falls away. You have to be able to see past what your own core need is being filled to see the rest of things so that you're not blinded. Yeah, and, and you speak to a really good point. Uh, they, they have a tendency to zero in on your weakness, so you need to be extra strong. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. You ever dated a sociopath? You ever been in this type of situation? We want to know about it. And how did you get out? How did you move on? How did you change your behavior so you could say game on to your love future and game over to sociopaths and narcissists? Right into us. You can find us at facebook.com yeah. slash the game over show. Hit the message button and we'll get your response right here. And if we read it live on the show, we'll uh, keep you anonymous. We'll send you a I dated a sociopath and all I got was this t-shirt. <laughs> Boo. Boo. Just kidding. Game over. <laughs> oh, I'm Jade. <laughs> Um, so I think it's time for street smart love advice. Every day on the show, we respond to your requests for live love advice and we give you the street smart responses right here. We do. Mm Mm-hmm. No sugar-coated, no milk and cookies. You don't sugar answers, but yeah. you're so like... I know. Sometimes you need to hold a pillow and rock gently as you hear what we're about to say. But if you listen, if you implement, you can learn how to say game over to bullshit and game on to a fabulous love future. And that's what we are here for. Definitely. All right. And we keep you anonymous. We do. That's our goal. So, as, as re- I, I'll exa- here's an example... This one comes in from Jay. Hi, Jay. That's an initial. Uh, Jay says, I've been talking to a guy for a few months, and recently he's become friends with benefits. So that's kind of cool. Friends with benefits. But he says he wants nothing serious just for fun. Mm, okay. okay. Well, so he's... He's, he's, he's a friend come, with benefits. And he's coming in and saying it's straight. Mm-hmm. Good for him. He texts me every day. Not all day. Just, you know, sometimes. And I like him, obviously. And he asks me about what I like, and he's investing a little bit. But... Um, He's because of the connection, she's starting to fall for him. Oh, yeah. She's trying hard not to. So Ladies, she's, we are wired differently from the boys. Well, so so she, she's asking, you know, I'm, I'm in really deep, but he wants nothing out of it. What do I do? You want me to take this? Sure. Jay. So, ladies, let's do a crash course in um, Friends with Benefits, right? Works for dudes. They are not wired here, here, and here together. We are wired here, here, and here together. So typically when we are sleeping with somebody, this is sleeping with them, this is sleeping with them, this is sleeping with them. So they can hit it and quit it and walk away and be so, like feeling so good after the sex, they go and instantly attract like 10 other ladies. We do it and we're like, I might like him. And it, it, it wreaks havoc on our chances of meeting other people, number one, and number two wreaks havoc on our ability to simply be friends with benefits. So I'm calling game over to all the ladies who are trying the friends with benefits thing. It doesn't work so well. Well, so, so not all of them. I mean, some some people can separate it out. Sure, but it sounds like well, she she's having trouble. So here, so and you would your, be in the majority. Uh, no doubt. Of ladies. No doubt, and well, there's a lot of men too, for sure. Well, I'm just speaking for the ladies. All right, right well, now. there's a lot of men too. I'll speak for the men, um, <laughs> but. But, <laughs> um, but to your point, you know, it's, it's difficult to separate it out. And I think now that she's... She's starting to have feelings. And, and well, now... And he's made it clear where he stands. I'm calling game over. I'm calling game over, too. I mean, you can keep investing in it, but you know what you're going to get there. And so. and so the other thing is you could talk to him about your budding feelings, but he sounds like he's made it pretty clear where he's coming from. Right. So I don't know how well he'll receive that. And, and here's the other thing I want to say, and I say this frequently on the show. When you are falling for somebody, make sure you're not the only one falling. Make right. sure there are two of you falling. Right. And if you start to see yourself and you catch yourself falling and you're falling alone, reel it back in. Have a conversation with the other person. See where they're at. If they're not on the same page, don't get that hard away. Keep that hard right here. 
And if you can keep it casual and do the friends with benefit thing, awesome, game on. If you can't, I can't believe I just did thumbs up. If you can't, then it's game over. <laughs> I agree. No, yeah. And so I would recommend that she have, being that she's falling for him anyway, Yeah. she should just have the conversation now. Oh, yeah. You and to. one way or the other, either you'll get a good answer to where he's going to put in emotionally, or you'll know where he stands and then you have a decision to make. Yeah, and I will say this. This is a difficult thing to do and have this conversation if he doesn't have the same feelings and you cut it off, you are one step closer to meeting a man who will meet you there. And right. I know that's not fun to hear because you want this guy to be that guy, but if he's not, let him go, move on. Let us know how that goes, please, yeah, Jay. Yeah, please do. This next one comes in from S. Hi, S. S says, I've been with a man for 11 years, two okay. young children, okay. she's 33, Okay. but the man has cheated and lied and has been emotionally abusive. Didn't we just do a show about this two seconds ago? I'm calling game over. He's finally walked out and has moved Good. back to his, uh, moved to another country. I'm Good. not going to name it. Um, Good. Good. And for th- he's moved there for three months and he's saying that it's over, but that he loves her and that they'll get back together someday. So she's supposed to hang around? Well, I Stick guess. Um, hang on the line? But he won't work any of the issues. Way to the uh, issues. not close the door. Way to leave an escape hatch for yourself. And for her to stay on the line, dude. I'm calling game over on your wussy her, ass. Her question is, why do I find myself making excuses for him? Because you love him, S. But what's love got to do with it, Tina? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, come on. This guy has moved to another country. Talk about game over. Totally. Well, and he's not was working. He cheated, lied, right? emotionally, emotionally abusive. abusive, and now left town, left the country. I say thank your lucky stars and move the fuck on. Game over on this dude. I call game over too. And 11 years, two kids, you know, if mm. he's been like this for a long period of time and you're still making excuses for him, why do, you, get any better. why do you not like you enough? You know, how, how can you love him and not you? That's my question. And what kind of example are you setting for those kids? Absolutely. Boo. S, game over. Yeah. I know know. that's hard to hear, but please, game over for the sake of you, for the sake of your kids. Move on. Close that door. Let him go to that other country. Don't hang around for him. This last one comes in from G. Hi, G. G says, I've I've been in love with a guy for the last four years. Okay. uh, And we've had a relationship for about the last two. But then things turned a little bit bad, and he went back to another girl. Uh, He went to some other girl, not back. Sorry. He ended up with another girl about six months ago. Okay. He kept saying he'd be back soon, but he never actually came back. Uh, What's prob- with these wussy men? Problem with, with me, this is G talking, the problem with yeah, me is I that I really G. love him and I want him back no matter what it takes. Why? You want him back no matter what it takes? No. Why? He left and and he's been gone six months. He wouldn't the... even be man enough to say he was leaving. Well, right, but it's, but it's, for me, it's that and it's something else, like... It's, check this out. I'm going to go, see that girl over there? I'm going to go hit that real quick. Oh, shit. I'll be She's back in a few months. Yeah, I'll be back for about, I'll be back six months, eight months. So I don't know. I'll let you know. When I get tired of that, I'll be back here. And you just hang out. I'll be back. That's Game what over. he just said to you. Game over. So you don't want him back no matter what it takes. What you want is a guy who gives a shit. Better yet, well, you want you to give a shit about you. Word. So... The other red flag here is she's been in love with him for four years and they've only been together for two years. So it sounds like you've got some addiction to this man. Right. And I'm calling, getting some rehab about that. Definitely. And, and, and part of that is what you're saying. Get into you. Love you. Get into you. There's Get also over him. There's a great book titled Love and Addiction. Ooh, yes. Um, I cannot remember the author, but we will post it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so go to facebook.com slash the game over show. Yeah. We'll have that posted up um, around love and addiction. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have that. You deserve to move on and, and not... So when we are addicted to love... That doesn't change overnight. So get a book like Charles is saying. Learn your own behavior and your own habits so this doesn't happen again. But let this guy go. He is so not worth the investment. Definitely. Yeah. I'm if, so sorry about that. If you have a question, yes. please reach us. Facebook.com yeah. slash The Game Over Show. We'll get it live. Well, we'll yeah. read it live on the air. We'll keep you anonymous we and, and get you your advice. Yay. This weekend... This weekend is the Oscars, so we are going to come back on Monday with all of the scoop about who was hot, the winners, maybe the losers, um, (laughs) and any 
just exciting, juicy, juicy gossip about who wore what and who was kissing who. And on Monday, we're going to be talking about dating in your 40s. A lot of people dating in their 40s. Yeah. Past relationships or first timers who are looking for real long term love. Yeah, we're so going to be talking come about back that. for that. Until then, this has been the Game Over Show. I'm Charles J. Orlando. I think that makes me Lisa Stedman. Better. I know. See you Monday. Bye. Bye. Bye.